Hey everyone, I'm Angela Fazio. And I'm Kristen Cantrell, and this is Moms in Real Estate's Girl Educate Yourself with Kristen Kingsbury. So this is part two of a two-part series. If you missed part one, you need to go back and watch it because we're talking about her five tips for real estate investing, like starting now. And we heard three of her tips, and today we're finishing up with her fourth and fifth tip. So welcome back, Kristen. Thank you so much for coming back for your part two. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you for having me again. Happy to share. So in last week's episode, we talked about save like crazy, learn, listen, and keep your eyes on the market so you know a deal when you see one. Um, you make money on the buy. And tip number four is just at a glance formulas that teach you to say yes to digging further. So people ask me a lot, um, well, how do I know when it's worth digging further into? And so there are just some at a glance things that I do just to identify if it's something I want to investigate more. Um, and then, of course, you want to plug in real numbers. So these are not the end all formulas. These are just at a glance. Do more digging. Number one, can you really Rent it for at least 1% of the purchase price or close. This is hard in some markets, especially now. So basically, um, you know, if you're buying a $200,000 house, can you rent it for two grand a month? Usually the answer is no, at least in my market, the answer is no, but you can get yourself pretty darn close. If you can get yourself close, then that's a property that I wanna dig further into and see if I can increase the value and add equity. Um, and just basically it's a yes or no. If, if it's like, no, we're not even halfway, I'm moving on to the next property and I'm not gonna spend a ton of time analyzing every single property. So if I can, um, rent it for approximately 1% of the purchase price. I keep digging. Um, can I, can you work your mortgage payment to 50% of the rental income? So this is me and my preference, because like I said, I'm super conservative. I saw the market crash and what I saw was people with multifamilies and people with rentals. Um, there was so many homes being foreclosed on that renters were getting to move out of multifamily into site built homes. And these multifamily, these duplexes, these apartment complexes, their rents were dropping like crazy. And I watched mm -hmm. in that market rents drop 50% easily. And so in my mind, just for my company, I always make sure that my mortgage payment can be calculated at 50% of the current rent value. That way, if the market crashes, I'm always good. Somebody else is always paying for that house for me. I'm never worried about having to pick that up. So crazy. I know most investors will not tell you that. I am super conservative, but it is it is something that I would say I've seen it happen before and it can happen again. So just be careful if you're not going to run off that rule. Um, yeah, if you think about it, though, if you think about it, you're starting from the most conservative standpoint. And I think that's healthy because if people have a little bit more risk tolerance, OK, but at yeah. least you heard, hey, this can happen. Rents can drop. You know, if you mm -hmm. want to at least they've heard that most conservative explanation. So they are making a, a decision with their eyes wide open if they're going to mm -hmm. take more risk. Yes, absolutely. Because it's great to know that no matter what, like the, the rentals that we own, somebody else is always going to be able to pay those rents. So I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Risk tolerance definitely makes a difference. So figuring out what's your comfy zone um, and then going with that. But give yourself some cushion in case the market changes. Don't always assume it's going to be great. Um, Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, listen for pain and pleasure. So as you're out and about and you're talking to people, one of the at a glance, like, dig furthers is listen for pain and pleasure. Did you find somebody where you can solve a problem or serve a need? This is where you find the best deals. This might be a divorce. This might be a family that's grown too much and they need to uh, move into a bigger house. This may be a death in the family. This may be somebody got themselves into a payment they can't afford. So you're listening for pain and pleasure and trying to figure out how can I solve their problem? Maybe they want to be closer to grandkids, whatever that is. A lot of times these are off market and, and you're just stumbling upon them by talking to people and using your relationships. So, um, Tip number five. So that was number four at a glance, things that you're going to dig further into. Number five, red flags, manage your risk. Don't spend what you can't afford to lose. And so again, like I never want to get caught like I've seen so many people caught where a mortgage is called or something like that um, it, or health problems, you know, come up and you can't afford the mortgage payments that you've got yourself into. I see a lot of people get in with really skinny margins and it's just mm -hmm. the smallest change in the market can literally destroy their lives, cause divorces. The whole point of me teaching this is to 
get rid of divorces and get rid of, you know, the, the, yeah. the problems that money causes. So I say be a little more conservative. Um, don't spend what you can't afford to lose. Play the long game. If you look at the stock market, at the real estate market, people say, well, isn't going to crash? Well, if you look back at the history of the real estate market, it goes up, it comes down a little, it goes back up. I mean, we're almost back to, and in some markets, even higher to where we were at the last top of the market where it was a bubble. It's going to mm -hmm. continue to just ride this wave up. And so as long as you're playing the long game, you're going to see an upward trend line. So play the mm -hmm. long game. Don't try to time the market. You won't get it right. Sometimes you will, but it's definitely a risk. So think about playing the long game when you're talking about generational wealth. Um, plan on balloon payments. Because when you're creative financing, and we can talk about that in another segment, a lot of times it's structured to where a balloon payment comes up. Do not spend the money coming in from your rentals and then be caught with a balloon payment that you can't come up with. You've just paid for the asset for all these years. You put money down. Um, so I always calculate that 60-40 that method, all of that money from rent goes into an account and it pays down that balloon. So when the balloon comes up, it's already paid for and I don't have anything to come up with. So just be thinking ahead at the things that will come because the worst thing would be you've worked on um, building this portfolio and you have these balloon payments come up and you're not prepared for them. So be careful of that. Um, don't count on vacation rental income. Right now we're in the trend of vacation owners, vacation rentals. And here's the truth is they may be allowed in many places. And yes, right now they're bringing in amazing income um, in, mm -hmm. in some of ours, double what a long-term tenant would, would pay you. Um, but this weekend, as we're even sitting at this new condo, uh, the HOI, HOA guy comes in and he's like, I'm so sick of these things. We're taking these to the board meeting. I'm sick of people renting them like hotel rooms. So again, I always calculate my mortgage to where my long-term rental income will double pay the mortgage, if that makes sense. Um, now the vacation, the vacation income is just even double that. That's great for now, but that's not what I'm going to count on. Cause all it takes is a board saying, we're not doing this anymore. And I can that's be right. again, yep. again. So be super careful. I um, hope that never happens. In my Airbnb. <laughs> I'll be mad. <laughs> unlikely. Unlikely. I know though. I'm up in the white mountains. I think we'll be fine. I hope. Do, I just, just keep it in your mind and have a backup plan because it's I, always in my mind. <laughs> yeah, I, that. I see it, and people people are like, "Yay, look at the vacation rental income!" And it's like, "You're right, that is the icing on the cake." But plan here's, for a normal market. Plan for here's a normal what I did to plan for that. I get everybody's emails that rents from me, so I will continue to market to them. I don't know if I should say that on here. Why? I don't know. I think it's fine. <laughs> I think that's a good strategy. Yeah. So if yeah, everyone database. goes away, I, I still have a database. Yeah. Yeah. In this, in this little condo complex, um, my thought, and we, we planned for it being a potential that it couldn't be an Airbnb at some point right now they have them. If the board says, no, we don't want that in this particular area. Like there's nothing to protect me. So I just have to protect myself and be thinking ahead of that. So, um, so those are some ideas and some red flags. Lastly, I would just say track your net worth, know what your goals are, tracking your cash flow, your equity, your debt. You just need to know where your money is at. What position are you in and make sure that you're headed in the right direction. Would it be okay? Um, something that is just kind of a good strategy is would if if you lost your spouse. Could you financially pay all the bills with your income? And try to live within the means of a single income. That, I mean, opens so many doors. But again, it comes to lowering your expenses. Um, you know, make sure that once you get these properties going, that you have life insurance to protect your family. Mm -hmm. If something were to happen to me, I never want my husband to have to get rid of our assets and what we've worked so mm -hmm. hard for because we didn't have a life insurance policy. So just thinking ahead, being very forward thinking and playing the long game. Well, it is obvious you are a total wealth yeah. of knowledge when it comes to thinking about your finances in general and your, your opportunities with investments. So I am so grateful that you're sharing these tips with the ladies who are listening. I'm just 100% sure that someone's going to be like, ding, 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 <laughs> light bulb went off. So um, any last words, Kristen? No, I love that. I yeah. think that there were five solid tips that 
I think so much value is going to be given from that. So thank you so much for coming on. Yes. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you ladies for watching. I hope this has been a blessing to you and tune in next time. Bye, Thanks, Kristen. Ladies.